Good day, mate. Welcome back to the channel. I'm FPL Roo and welcome back to another FPL video. So in today's video, we're going to be looking at my transfer tips for game week 12. We'll be going through some of the players that you're going to be bringing in or potentially taking out. And I'll be kind of ranking them, talking about them and seeing whether you should make them moves. If you are new to the channel, please make sure you do subscribe and smash a like on this video too. Let's get into it. Yo, listen up, Ru is stepping up the game Where fantasy premier league runs in his veins From transfers to captains, he's always on top Guiding you through every game week non-stop They say Ru got that salad flow Welcome to the channel, enjoy the show Wild cards, free hits with so much vibe If you're hunting for success, then make sure you subscribe So first up, we do have the man that has just got a 22-pointer Four assists and one goal in game week 11 it is jeremy doku the man city winger so he comes in at 6.6 .6 million and he's only 2.6 percent owned um which is incredible um 125 000 of you have bought him in already this game week and i'm sure that's going to increase um what a game he had um incredible four goals um sorry four assists one goal five attacking returns um a lot of us did captain harland i assume and to see man city win 6-1 and him not get any returns and then kind of Doku kind of taking up all the all the assists and, and obviously one of the goals it is a bit hurtful but um it's not like a lot of people had Doku as he's only about two percent owned so um, in terms of bringing him in for future weeks um the only concern is that he probably I'd say isn't nailed nailed he has started six games out of 11 um this season but obviously he didn't kind of turn up until game week three, game week four. So let's just count that from game week four. So he started game week four, started game week five, started um, game week six, but he came off after 51 minutes, started game week seven. Um, he was benched game week eight, started game week nine. He was benched game week 10, and then he started game week 11. So I wouldn't say he is nailed. Um, he is at 6.6 .6 million. So I'd say if you do have him in your team, you probably need him to be nailed um, and Man City's fixtures are not the best coming up so Chelsea away Liverpool at home Spurs at home Villa away and they also have a blank game week in game week 18 um, so for that reason um, although he is a a good option and he does look really really good he looks he reminds me of Leroy Sarni a lot um, on that left wing taking people on getting into dangerous positions um, but for me I think it, it's just you just need nailed minutes currently um, and I don't think he can give you that. Yes, you could argue that he's he's only been um he's only not started two games while he's been available. Um, but two games out of six, seven is a little bit too much for me. Um, and I don't think he's delivered consistently enough to um kind of warrant maybe he starts one in three, or sorry, maybe he he uh, gets benched one in three, maybe he gets benched one in four. Um his returns haven't been consistent enough for me because overall he's got two goals and five assists. So he's only got one goal, one assist before game week 11. Uh, for that reason, I wouldn't be bringing in Jeremy Doku this week. Maybe after uh, Man City's fixtures do do turn a slightly better, then he could be an option. But for now, um, yeah, I'd be staying clear of Jeremy Doku. So next up, we have got Martin Erdegaard. Um, so a player that I guess all of us would say he, he would be nailed. Um, he's missed the last two game weeks, so Sheffield United at home and Newcastle away. Um, he was in the squad for Arsenal's Carabao Cup game against West Ham. Um, so for me, I'm a little bit confused why he ended up still being injured for a uh, Newcastle game, and he did miss that out. He has got a hip injury. Um, he's kind of 75% likely to be back for game week 12. And with Arsenal's fixtures, they, they do look really, really good coming up. So um, Burnley at home, Brentford away, Wolves at home. Luton away. Um, so some really, really good fixtures there. And um, Odegaard, yes, he's 8.4 million. Yes, he's 18.5% owned. So he's not the, a differential. Um, for me, I probably would be taking him out. I, I don't think he's done enough this season um, without kind of them given penalties that, that Saka's kind of given him out of, I don't know what you want to call it, generosity. Um, he's got three goals and two assists in, in 11 games. And for 8.4 million, there's so many more players out there that can deliver uh, more points, more goals, and, and a bigger threat for me. Um, someone like, uh, I won't mention him because we're actually going to mention him later on in the video, but um, even um, 
yeah, someone like Madison could be a good option as an alternative to Odegaard because you know he's going to be nailed um, and he's delivered this season. Um, so for me, if you do own Odegaard, I completely understand you wanting to take him out. I'd probably wait to hear what Arteta says. If he does play in the Champions League midweek, then potentially you could keep him as them fixtures do look great. But if he doesn't play midweek, then I probably would be taking him out as 8.4 million is a lot to have on your bench of a player that's not going to be playing. So 66,000 managers have already taken out Erling Haaland. Uh, obviously, it comes in at uh, 14 million, 84, um, around 84% owned for me. I think it's a wait and see with Haaland. I completely understand why people are taking him out. He did get that angle injury. It is frustrating owning a player that um, where his team did score six goals and he didn't return, especially when a lot of people did captain him. Um, he kind of, people that did take him out, I guess they want to, for me, I've been hearing a lot of talk that people that haven't owned Haaland have been, have been benefiting um, over the last few game weeks, but he did score against uh, Brighton and he scored two and he got an assist against Man United. Yes, you could argue that no one captained him against Man United, but there's still a lot of people that did. Um, and even if not, like you, you still own him for a 16-point hole. So for me, if Haaland is fit, I am keeping him. Yes, the fixtures, like I've mentioned with, with Doku, Chelsea away, Liverpool at home, Spurs at home, Villa away. Yes, they're not great, and it blanks in game week 18. But we've seen Haaland against Man United. Um, we know he can he can deliver it in a, any game, really. Um, and for me, I would be keeping him if he is fit. Um, that is a big if. If he's injured, and I think we can have that conversation. Maybe we could go to Watkins. Maybe we can go to Alvarez as he will be playing number nine if we don't already own Alvarez. Um, I think there are options out there if he is going to miss a few games. But it's kind of a wait and see now. For me, if he is fit, there's no way I'm taking out Haaland. Um, let me know what you think in the comments below because I know there's a lot of different opinions on this. So it'll be great to hear some of your opinions on um, whether you're taking out Haaland or not. So Bowen is on fire and he's... <laughs> um, yeah, so Bowen's next up on the list. So 33, over 33,000 chances in, 7.4 million, over 21% owned. Um, and I can see why I think he is a really good option um, for the next few game weeks. Yes, West Ham are on absolutely stinky form. They haven't won in four game weeks. They've only won uh, one in the last seven game weeks as well. So not the best from them, um, especially with the fixtures. Ha they haven't been that hard, I'd say. So uh, Brentford away, yes, that's a tricky game. Um, Everton at home, you'd, you'd fancy them to win. Villa away, yes, that could be tough. Newcastle at home, yes, could be tough. Sheffield United at home. Um, Liverpool away, Man City away. So, they are, I could, yeah, I kind of agree that it could be tough, but West Ham should be getting a few more results than they have done. One win in the last um, seven is not good enough for a team that um, have won the Conference League last season and are probably looking to push um, for a Europa League spot this season. But having said that, um, Bowen has scored seven goals and one assist this season, so eight returns. Um, he started every single game. He's played 90 minutes in every single game, which is great, um, especially with how much added time there is nowadays. You kind of want a player to be able to play 90 minutes as they're really getting they're getting about 110 <laughs> minutes plus um, out of that. So um, for me, I do like the look of Bowen, especially with the fixtures coming up. So Forest at home, Burnley away and Palace at home. Then they've got Spurs away, but then they've got um, Fulham Wolves as well. Um, and I really do like Bowen. Bowen's shown that he can score against anyone, so I'm not even too worried about that Spurs game, to be honest. Um, he got a goal last time out as well. Um, potentially, I doubt it, but he could be on penalties. But I, I very much do doubt it. But for me, I think he is a great option. And with them fixtures, um, I can totally see why a lot of people are bringing him in. For me, though, I just can't really get him in my team. Um, I've got Adingra, I've got Saka, Madison, Son, Salah. So there's no way I could. I could potentially drop Madison, but for now, um, I do like the look of Madison and I think he is um, crucial to everything good Spurs do, so I will be keeping him. Um, but it's definitely interesting me that um, Bowen is, is, like I said, on fire and um, he will be a good option uh, for weeks to come. Let me know if you're going to bring in Bowen.
So next up, we have got a Palace defender. We've got Tyreek Mitchell, um, 4.5 million, and he's only 1.8% owned. Um, has been added quite a few chances in, so over 13,000 of you have brought him in. And I can totally see why. Um, for me, though, it, I do like a Palace defender. I just don't know if it has to be Tyreek Mitchell. I think Gahey could be an option, but obviously with Gahey, you might be paying a little bit more. Um, so I can totally see why people are going for Tyreek Mitchell. Um, Gahey is now 4.6 million, whereas Tyreek Mitchell is still 4.5. So um, I completely understand that. I don't want to be too knee-jerky, though, as obviously he did get that 15-point haul. He got a goal um, last time out, so I don't want to be too knee-jerky. But I do think a uh, Palace defender is a very good option for the next four game weeks. So Everton at home, Luton away. West Ham away and Bournemouth at home. So some really good games in that. Um, for me, I've got Gahey. Do I wish I had Mitchell? <laughs> Not really. Yes, he did get that haul. But I think they're both about as good as each other. Obviously, in hindsight, I would have loved Mitchell's haul, but um, I didn't know who was going to get that, who was going to score. Um, I'm just really happy that I do own a Palace defender for the next coming game weeks. Like I said, they look really, really good. Um, even in terms of them defensively I actually feel I want to say I want to say they're a little bit I guess underrated um they've kept five clean sheets in seven in um, 11 games which is which is a really good return considering they played Arsenal they've played Man United they've played um Newcastle they've played Spurs um so some tough games in that um uh, for me yeah I think Palace defender is a really good option I think you should probably be bringing one in if you are taking out maybe a doggy or taking out maybe Gabrielle. Um, then I think going for someone like Tyreek Mitchell at 4.5 million is a really, really good pick. Um, that was it for this video. Smash a like, uh, leave a comment below what you think on these transfer tips. And uh, yeah, please do subscribe to the channel as it does help me out. And I'll catch you in the next video. Cheers.